Thank you very much. Putting in tens of millions of 5G antennas without a single biological test of safety has to be about the stupidest idea anybody has had in the history of the world. As before with John, he, sh he showed you Professor Martin Paul at the Washington State University. That was him speaking. So, good afternoon to everybody. Congratulations on the big turnout. I do appreciate you being here. And I really think we not only need to do something in Bournemouth and indeed through the country, but we can do something. And a turnout like this, I hope, will inspire people to go out and do something against this very dangerous 5G. Just, I, I've just got to do a little disclaimer, I, and, and I do it for the others, because you must go out and do your own research. Can everybody hear me all right? Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah. You must go out and do your own research. And anything I say that's health-related, you must check with your doctor. And there's no legal intention, and I claim no specific expertise. So ha having done away with that, uh, we can get, get into matters. I first got into uh, 5G a couple of years, well, I say got into it. I, I became interested when I went to Ian Crane's um, AV, I think it was AV10, a, AV9, AV10, AV11 this year. And I listened to Mark Steele. I know about 5G, but like probably some of the others, I, I, I had no idea of how potentially lethal, now I won't just use the word dangerous, I use the word lethal 5, 5G is and will be. And it's, it, we just cannot ignore it. And, and one of the things that's come home uh, was uh, when John Kitson showed you Dr. Paul's Pres uh, presentation, who said four to six months before it takes effect. Now, if we go away and we're just going to leave it at that and say, oh, well, we have to wait till the BBC tells us that it's bad, then, uh, you know, we're going to be in trouble. Um, so I, I see it as, as a journey. We cross the Rubicon. And there's two ways we can go. We can accept 5G and think it's all going to go away and it's just going to carry on as we are. People think, we've, we've survived 4G, ah, 5G, is, but there are some incredible differences. So we're at the crossroads at the other side of the Rubicon and we're embarking on the journey from which we cannot return. We must make a decision of what we're going to do. How, if we decide to do nothing, we might just be as bad off as those who try to do something. But there's lots of technology out there that can protect us. Uh, but, and we need to protect ourselves from electro smog as well. So uh, don't, don't give up on it. Don't say, oh, well, there's nothing we can do because there's plenty we can do. But uh, it requires a lot of research and a lot of work. And that's not everybody's cup of tea, but for those that have turned up today, <laughs> I think uh, that's a magnificent effort. You can give yourself a round of applause again if you want, if you're feeling like that, but it's a lot of spirit. We've got to get you going. I just want to give you an idea. Uh, we've, been, we've been over the intensity of, of, of the radiation of the RF frequencies. And I, I want to convince you more for those that are still skeptic uh, of just what is happening. And, and we are in, in this Orwellian grid. Now, I've been on to, uh, as many of you have seen and John showed, Stop 5G on Earth and in Space. And uh, just a couple of things here. They, the millimetre waves, they're, they're poorly received. So they've got to, actually, many of you will know this, so forgive me um, if it sounds patronising, but they've got to go approximately 100 metres, these, these cells on the trees. On, on the lampposts, on the bus stops, etc., etc., so that they, we can pick up the, the radiation. So, in Australia, there's a, a, a legal firm called Premier. Now, what they are being successful, and what they are doing is that they're showing that the um, cell on the lamp, wherever it is, is an assault on you. Now that 
will en enter it, if we can show that, and if they can show that, into other legal domains of which we can protect ourselves. I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to go too, too deep into it. There's going to be base stations, devices, uh, phones that can... The phones themselves will contain dozens of antennas. And uh, just think about this for a moment. We've got all this technology. Is it just so that we can have a 5G smartphone and, and download videos quicker? Does anybody ask? There's got to be more to it than that. How many, let's just do a little, how many people think there's more to it than that? Yeah, thanks. Great, great. Um, just out of interest, is there anybody here who thinks what they've seen today is not real and they can go away and, and not feel anything? Is there anybody? That's fantastic. That's a tribute to the former speakers who, who were absolutely brilliant. What an act to follow, hey? So, um, as I say, they'll contain hundreds of thousands of antennas. And there'll be multiple beams in, in arrays. And they, they've, got to, they've got to cover every aspect, every altitude. So they've got to put antennas and receivers, and et cetera, et cetera. In the USA, the power will be equal to 300,000 watts per gigahertz spectrum. This is a thousand, this is between 10 to 1,000 times more powerful than the levels permitted at the current base stations. That's in the USA. I, I think it's going to be the same. It will be the same in, in the UK. Now, when, when we have this radiation, uh, we, we, we've seen it discussed before, and I just want to, so that we can actually emotionally integrate with what's happening, because it, it's not just radiation. It's the amount of energy that the radiation puts into our body. So you imagine you've got one gigahertz and it's going a thousand million times into your body. If you change that to 50 gigahertz uh, and, and that's going through quicker. So per second, let's say per second, you're absorbing more energy. Now they say non-ionization non does not cause problems in the body. But trust me, that is enough to knock uh, the, the, the free electron, uh, make it so there's a free electron coming off the atoms in the body. So what we will have basically, I, I've got to whip it along, but we, we have the ground-based stations, we have the space stations, and we have the connection with the satellites. And currently there are 200 satellites that are servicing according to the um, uh, space, um, um, according to NASA and et cetera. And now there's going to be 50,000 satellites. 50,000 are planned. Or also you can download a film a lot quicker. <laughs> Every satellite will be emitting 500 million watts, radiating all areas of the Earth. Now, just one thing... Um, I, I'm going to have to skip something here because um, I can see the time's running in and we're going to talk about local issues. Um, we have a, a, a Schumann wave, 7.83 hertz. And all of life is dependent on that Schumann wave. But when they go into space, they, they take that Schumann wave and generate it on, in, in space so that we can survive. All of Earth... Uh, wildlife is harmonized to be dependent and has become dependent on the human wave. Now when we have this amount of power coming from the space, we um, will then disrupt considerably the amount of harmonization with our, ourselves, our wildlife, not to mention it affects the weather stations and so on. So let's, let's move on. I, I did have some uh, health aspect. If, we, if we've got some time, I'll do it at the end. But I want to talk about the Lansdowne, Lansdowne Testbed Project. Funnily enough, the Lansdowne Testbed Project is now called the Smart Place Pilot Project. 
Now, do you think that's got anything to do with the Nuremberg Code when they use the word testbed? Any, 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 what, what's your thoughts? I'll make an implication, I can't make a conclusion, but I, 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 you can see it's all smoke and mirrors. In, 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 in. I think it's a national thing, so it's not just the local council that are playing those games with smoke and mirrors. Now, one, there's a project primarily supported by one million of Dorset's local enterprise partnership funds plus 330k matching funding. There's funds to support smart place applications, but the point I, I want to make here is that these funds were supported before they had the call for evidence and, and the public, uh, informed public consultation. So now just think about that. By the time we went to give evidence, and, and by the time they came to the public, they'd already decided what they were going to do. Yeah, that, that, I, I just sit on that for a moment. And, and that is cavalier, it's dishonest. And I, I would urge everybody here to, to clarify the, the timing of all this. When, when, when did you get this funding? When, when did you put this... Aerial Maston, when did you call for evidence? Did that evidence matter? Because um, you've already started on the project. And then how does that leave us thinking about our local council? And it, it's happening nationwide. Complete lack of trust, uh, because it's just plainly dishonest. There's no other word. It's devious. It's smoke and mirrors. Not to mention illegal. Uh, you're probably absolutely right, but I, I mustn't make that claim. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, so, some of the uh, things that are troubling is they're going to start the Lansdowne, um, well, I was going to call it the Lansdowne Testbed Project. Let's call it the Testbed Project because we're integrated with the Nuremberg Code. But actually, it's a smart place pilot project. They're going to put a small temporary sub 6 gigahertz 5G trial network for the Lansdowne. They're going to put a, a small temporary sub 26.6 gigahertz trial network uh, and uh, 900 k nearly a million pounds have been secured for digital infrastructure. They've put ducted fiber around the lens down. Uh, it's already installed. Now, fiber optics. Is that my timer? <laughs> The, the, fi the fiber optics is, a, is an alternative. It's not a complete alternative to 5G um, wireless technology, but it, it, it is an alternative. So, and why, why are they rushing this? It's another thing to uh, ask the council. And they'll be connecting to co uh, commercial data of, of the Internet of Things. And this starts this summer. So, let's come back to the timing again. Um, yesterday, as late as yesterday, I went onto e and &E website. Um, they said they were going to start later last year, early this year. Now, it's, they say they're starting, but it's not known. But Vodafone said, we'll arrive in Bournemouth later this year. That's their words. Now, just think about this. This, this uh, Smart Place pilot project starts in the summer. As far as I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, it lasts two years. Now, if the pilot project lasts two years and Vodafone are starting later this year, why are we, yeah, why are we having a test? What are they testing? So I, I think it's time for the Nuremberg Code. What do you think? Yes. Yeah, I, I think it is. Sorry, I would have loved to have had it up there. But I've got the Nuremberg Code in 1947. It was designed to stop human experimentation. And it, this is from the 5G Space Appeal, but the Nuremberg Code is what it is. And it's enshrined in medical practices throughout the world. Now, think about the residents of Lansdowne, because we're going to get into them. Uh, so I say them, I, I don't quite live in them. Actually, that's interesting. How many people live in Lansdowne? Bournemouth East, if you say Bournemouth East. Or, or Bournemouth East. Yeah, okay, I thought, thought there'd be more. But, okay, so... Uh, um, 
I, I think that uh, those who live in the Lansdowne area, um, and Bournemouth East, as Mike said, need to have an extra listen to this and get on to the authorities. Sorry, Luke, can I just say, so the Bournemouth East, the, uh, the Lansdowne project will include East Overcliff, Charminster, uh, almost into Pokestown, going that way, uh, and all of the, the actual Lansdowne area where all the student accommodation is, uh, right the way up to Bath Hill. So. It, when they call it the Lansdowne Project, it's kind of uh, a little bit disingenuous because it's much more than that. Thanks, Mike. Can we look that up on a map? Is it on the internet? I think it's on the BCP Council website. Is it right? Yeah. That, I, I can't confirm that, but I, I, I'm assuming it is. It is, yeah. Yes, thank you. Now, I, I've got ten items, and, and, and this is the, the central crux of the discussion, thinking of the residents of the area that Mike's just given us. The Nuremberg Codes asks, the subjects must consent voluntarily. So how, how, many, how many, is there anybody here want to volunteer to upset 5G? <laughs> Does anybody know, anybody in Langsdown that put their hand up and volunteer? Does anybody know of any plans to ask them to volunteer? Because if you're asking them to volunteer, you, you've got to give them all the information. And we don't have all the information, we just know it's going to start in summer, thank you, Bournemouth CB. Um, the experiment must reveal fruitful results. Now, the only way we can be sure of that is to have it thoroughly monitored. So then, having it monitored, that brings in a lot of other questions, doesn't it? The experiments must be done on animals first. I'm not comfortable with that, but that's, that's in the Nuremberg Code. So I'm only relating that, I'm not saying, I'm not advocating that we, or not advocating about animal experimentation. So uh, 5G was tested on rats. Uh, and um, they, they contract, the, there was a mass contraction of glycoma, brain cancer. There's a bigger word than glycoma, but brain cancer is enough, glycoma is close enough. And, and, and that is one of, of many, many studies that prove that exposure to RF frequencies, EMF, 5G, millimeter waves is, is dangerous. Now, number four, no physical or mental suffering must be involved. So how can we guarantee that? Uh, as, as only after the nosebleeds, the, the sleepless nights, the cancers. No risk of injury, disablement or death. Well, we all know the answer to that one, I think. Um, by the way, um, those who suffer from hypersensitivity will, will uh, feel it e even more so. So when, when we say, going back, sorry, to number four, no physical mental suffering must be involved. If, if you suffer from uh, hypersensitivity, why not write right into the council and, and say, well, I'm established as having hypersensitivity. I don't want you to switch it on because uh, in accordance with the Nuremberg Code. Sorry, five minutes. Five minutes, that's fine, that's fine. Um, he's, he's dying to get rid of me. <laughs> um, now, the other one is a degree of risk cannot be greater than the importance of the problem. So you can weigh that up for yourself. Health and intrusion of issues be the benefits of 5G. Download it off our phones very quickly. Uh, communicating with your friends instantly in Antarctica. All these great opportunities for us. Number seven, preparations will safeguard against injury or death. So we need adequate warnings by the BCTP from qualified staff. So are they going to put any signs up? Are they going to um, uh, send out notices to all the residents in the area it covers? We must ask these questions. You must ask these questions. And I will ask. I live in Westbourne, Surrey Road, Westbourne. Uh, uh, and um, I might be picking up a bit, I don't know. I've already asked the questions. Ask the questions, ask the, ask the council, go to this Nuremberg Code and make sure they comply with the Nuremberg Code. If one or two do it, they'll just laugh at us. And, and, and so far, the council have been virtually dismissing us. 
uh, and they think they can get away with it, trust me, they won't. Not all councillors. Uh, yes, I say council, not councillors. Um, yeah, but you're right, it's not all councillors. We, we have some very fine councillors. I, I know of one here today. <laughs> so, uh, no offence to all the good guys. Because it, it does put us in the situation of good guys and bad guys. We can't avoid it. If you think 5G is great and, and you want to go ahead with it, then are, are you a good guy? A guy in the generic term. Sorry, ladies. Um, is it conduct uh, number eight, conducted by scientifically qualified staff? Well, that's a question you can ask them. It, uh, are the uh, BCP uh, officers, they call them officers or officer, ignit trained? So, subject has the right, number nine, subject has the right to stop the experiments. Well, good luck with that one. The people in charge must stop the experiment if they see an untoward effect on the subject. So theoretically, if you're going with the Nuremberg Code, you, you can write to them and say, well, I'm having regular nosebleeds since you've switched 5G on, I want you to stop it. Or you're in breach of the Nuremberg Code, and uh, I'll send you a notice of liability, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to the ombudsman, and we'll, we'll get it published. So, what, what do you think we should do? Do you think we should write to the residents in this area and tell them what's going on? Do you think the council are going to do that? It's going to go on their website, but how many, how, put your hands up anybody that looks on the council website for their information. There, a councillor, yeah, yeah, okay, well done. Yeah, that, that's, there's four. There's four. They, they should have published notices. I, I said this at, at the last cabinet meeting to, to that effect. Uh, we're only allowed 100 words, which makes it sound ridiculous. And so you, you, you must add ask them what they're, what they're going to do about um, the Lansdowne pro testbed project and, and how it will affect you. You want all the information and will they apply the, the Nuremberg Code. So all you have to do, email your counsellor, write to them. I'm going to read out, I'm, I'm nearly finished, I'm going to read out a letter from Karen at the back that I, I put here, concerned Bournemouth resident. That, that perhaps give you an example of um, uh, what you can do in, 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 in some of the concerns. So, how is it possible in present day that new installations, upgrades to mobile phone masks, transmitters, and necessary street furniture remain under the total control and leg legislation of our BCP planning authority, who are expected to follow the directives of the national planning policy framework Planning Policy England refers to relevant pages found in the National Planning Policy Framework. Whilst logically the planning department does have a role in positioning of hardware, we believe they are not competent nor qualified to make any decisions on, on the equipment relating to health and safety for our BC residents, wildlife or the environment. When related to unseen smog of EMS in our area, we are not just concerned about unknowns of 5G technology, there is also the ongoing cumulative effects of 2G, 3G, 4G, Tetra and other signals, smart meters, LED street lights and their overall effect. As an example, how easy is it for telecom providers to install their equipment and transmitters? We highlight the case, Dorset Healthcare NHS Trust, Shelley Road. Thank you, Karen. She's at the back there. Let's give her a Right, I, I, I did have a lot more, but um, uh, so I had some up my sleeve. Just in conclusion, let's work together to find a solution. Let's exercise the precautionary principle. Let's rise up to the challenge and battle to ensure all life is protected. We must stop flying blind into the unknown with, unproven, with the unproven safety of 5G. Let's take notice of the 30,000, many of whom is peer resilient, received or so studies which suggest we must stop 5G now. I hope you'll protect yourselves, family and indeed all life on earth by becoming involved. Thank you for your attention. The future has a way of inventing itself. Turning innovators loose is far preferable to expecting committees and regulators to find the future. 
we won't wait for the standards. We're already seeing the industry gearing up to seize this opportunity. Verizon and AT&T tell us they'll begin deploying 5G trials in 2017. And the first commercial deployments they're talking about are expected in 2020. And we're not done. As part of our July 14 action, we also plan to ask for comments on opening up other high-frequency bands. Many of the high-frequency bands that we will make available for 5G currently have some satellite users, as well as some Defense Department applications, or at least the possibility of future satellite and defense users. This means sharing will be required between satellite and terrestrial wireless, an issue that is especially relevant in the 28 gigahertz band. But if anyone tells you that they know the details of what 5G is going to become, run the other way. If something can be connected, it will be connected. Hundreds of billions of microchips connected in products from pill bottles to plant waterers. We must reject the notion that the 5G future will be the sole provenance of urban areas. The 5G revolution will touch all corners of our country. A lot more antenna sighting decisions by local governments and tightened our shot clock for sighting application reviews. America's local governments will play an important role in determining how we fulfill this national priority. You can be sure of only one thing. The biggest Internet of Things application has yet to be imagined. Tens of billions of dollars in economic activity. And that's damn important.